Hello, and today we are discussing host hotels and resorts, ticker HST. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts about the valuation of this company and its business quality. This company has a market cap of $11.4 billion, enterprise value of $13.8 billion. So you see about $2.4 billion in net debt on this business, about 15 to 20% of the overall enterprise value. They're operating the equity real estate investment trust business. So the REIT is pretty common for real estate investments. So they are an S&P 500 company, um, largest lodging, real estate investment trust um, they have luxury and upper scale hotels 72 properties in the u.s five internationally forty-one thousand rooms so it looks like they're brams they partner with premium brands so they hold non-controlling interests that's interesting um, and seven domestic and one international joint venture um, they have premium brands such as marriott ritz carlton weston sheraton st regis luxury collection hyatt so very top-end brands um, based upon my understanding of what these are here it's interesting that they are uh, or they also hold non-controlling interest so um, definitely targeting the upper end of the spectrum for hotels bit of 1.3 share turnover 233 percent so Let's look on the return of us at capital chart. So it looks like they lost money in 2002, lost, they broke even in 2004, lost in 2009, 2010, 2011. That's three years of losses, four years of losses, five years of losses. So they've lost money five years out of the last 20. So about, what's that, 25% of the time they're losing money. That's quite a significant amount. It's, it's more than I would prefer to see in an investment. It's kind of signaling it's about, a, you know, probably an average business because they're not making money consistently and profitably to, to be high quality. I want to see like 19 or 20 years out of 20 being profitable. Um, five years of losses is quite a lot. Let's look at the peaks and cycles of these returns. You can see that it does cycle a little bit here. You reach a peak of 7% return on invested capital in 2006. You hit six again in 2014, six in 2016, nine in 2018, 5% 2022. You can see that there's not a single year where the return on invested capital is above 10%. 10% is really the marker I want to see as a return on invested capital for investments for myself, and they are not hitting that mark here. Um, so the returns are just a little lower than I'd like um, in an investment that I would consider. So return on invested capital averaging 5%, return on equity of 8.6%. This is an important metric because if you want high returns over the long haul, your returns as a shareholder are going to be capped somewhat by the return on equity. You shouldn't really expect much higher returns over the long haul than your return on equity if you're a long-term shareholder in the stock. How do you get higher than that if it's a low return on equity? You need to trade the stock. You need to make a short-term buy where you know maybe at a really cheap price. When the market gets better, you get a better opportunity to sell. That sort of thing can really set you up well. PE here is pretty reasonable though. PE of 15 is the average PE for the S&P 500 company for an average stock. So if we're saying, hey, this is an average stock, average PE, you're not completely off base to get started. Um, I do have a concern though here with this revenue being negative growth over the course of the last 10 years. Assets negative. Um, I don't like owning companies that aren't growing. I think it makes it really hard to get high returns if your company is unable to grow over the long haul. The way that you get strong compounded investment returns is through reinvestment. And that reinvestment means you're putting money, you're buying more assets, you're finding a way to grow. And if you're not growing your revenue, then over the long term, you're not growing your EPS. So even though we see very high EPS and free cash flow growth here, 20%, 27%, that's not really repeatable over the long haul if you're not able to grow your revenue. So we do see revenue here go from 5.1 billion to 4.9 billion. They actually did terrible in 2020, um, better in 2021, and they kind of recovered in 2022. You can see they're still below their trend, but even before COVID, you know, the growth was anemic going from 5.1 billion in 2013 to 5.4 billion in 2019. So you're not growing rapidly by any means. You're seeing this 2%, 3%, 1% type growth rates. It's not very high. Gross profit is up over that period, so you have slightly higher margins now than you did. Operating profit is up about 50%, so that would mean your operating profit's compounding at maybe 4% a year, something along those lines. EPS has doubled from $0.42 cents to $0.88. Cents. I don't know why it's saying EPS growth is 27%. That's not what I'm seeing here. If you're going to double over the course of a decade, you're basically growing in the 7% range, 7 to 8% range, not 27%. You, let's compare some of these numbers. So 
Um, clearly, the trailing 12-month numbers must be better than what we're seeing here because we see 88 cents here in EPS for 2022. But you're trading at a PE of you know PE of 15 and 16, so it's telling me that my current earnings have to be above a dollar in order to justify those prices. The problem is that you know you earned a dollar in 2018, you earned a dollar in 2019, but you had you know years of losses here, um, and. So it's really hard to make sense of, you know, kind of what my reliable number is. You did pay a dividend, but that dividend was cut in 2020, eliminated in 2021. Not a great sign there. Overall, just kind of bleak financials. Lack of growth, as you can see here, is a massive problem for a company like this. If you like this video, if you're learning something, hit that like button. Again, liking the video is a great way to support the channel. Even if you don't like this company, it helps YouTube know that you're enjoying my content so it can recommend more to you. So please consider giving this video a like. Um, so SGNA, you can see your SGNA has gone up about 10% over the course of the decade, 327 to 366. <sighs> That's good because you know I mean that's that's actually quite a lot when you think your revenue has declined and but your SGNA is going up. That's not really what you want to be seeing. Um, your other operating expenses are maintaining about flat. Where are your where's your growth coming from? Is the interest expense going down? So yeah, basically. So it looks like your interest expense has gone down. You went from having um, a significant amount. You did have some good gross profit in the last trailing 12 months. That's showing up a little bit. Um, these numbers don't seem right. So you went up, no, I guess it did. So you, basically this gross profit's dropping to the operating profit line and you're able to get an additional 150 million from your net interest income. So you're growing quite a lot. And, and on this side, you know, you're moving here, your income tax is lower. So there's a few things helping you out there. Um, likewise, you are having share buybacks. You went from 748 million shares outstanding to 718 million shares outstanding. So you're buying back, you know, some of the range of, you know, maybe 5% of the shares over the course of the decade. That's not a lot. You're talking about less than half a percent per year to your growth rate there. That's really not a significant amount. I wouldn't really make much in counting that into the future. Um, you know, some years it's going up, some years it's down. Um, I, I wouldn't rely on that. Let's go to the balance sheet. Investments is down. You had 347 million to 132 million, but they kind of switched over to PP&E. So this is probably just a reclassification in part. Uh, cash and cash equivalents, long-term debt is down. So again, you had lower interest costs. That's certainly going to be one aspect of it is they have paid down debt. That's a good sign. You know, if you're not growing, paying down your debt is a good move. Operating cash. So of course your operating cash is higher than your net income here. This is common for REITs is you're going to have this cash flow. A lot of their expenses are going to be been depreciation and amortization. But of course, a lot of expenses is also being thrown back into these properties and PP&E spending. So you really have to balance like, well, what's the true number here? Because if you're investing this much money into PP&E, you're investing this money, much money into acquisitions, what's going on? Also, they have a very significant number here under QuickFS for this other you're definitely going to have to study the 10K annual reports if you want to really understand what's going on with this cash flow here because that's not that's really making it hard to tell what's going on. Um, overall, though, you know, you're paying dividends pretty reliably. I just nothing is impressive about this company. There is just an average company. They're they're earning profits. You know, three out of four years they're earning profits. The profits aren't particularly high. You know, five percent return on invested capital, eight percent return on equity. They, it's not like they're growing rapidly, so I'm not excited about growth. I'm not excited about returns on capital. The price isn't exciting, although it is average. It's just it's not exciting. It's not like it's cheap. You can't say it's cheap, like a PE of six or seven or something like that. Um, so overall, I'm going to pass on host hotels and resorts. It won't go on my watch list. If you learned something from the video, hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm working through every company in the SP 500, and I think there are some others that you would really enjoy. You can check out my watch list video here at the top of the screen. And if you Want to learn how to use this software quickfs.net the my affiliate link is the first link in the description below you can sign up for a free or paid account for that link great way to support the channel because i get a commission if you sign up using that link thank you for listening and until next time stop paying fees start building wealth